Hi, and thanks for joining us. Today we're going to look at how the 1906 auction of carriage house contents has been integral in our contemporary understanding of the Crane family's daily life at Acorn Hall from 1860 to 1906. Augustus and Mary Bowles Crane purchased Acorn Hall in 1857 and, following some pretty substantial modifications and additions to the existing building, moved their young family from New York City to Morristown by 1860. The Crane spent over 45 years at Acorn Hall raising their family and serving as influential and contributing members of the burgeoning local professional and business communities. In addition to being the family home, Acorn Hall was also Crane's gentleman's farm. While Augustus's library includes gardening books with his marginal notes, the Crane Family Archives maintains few records illustrating precisely what Crane planted, his yields, and his general philosophies towards his holding. What we do know is that Acorn Hall's associated carriage house was the hub of his daily activities. Here, five horses with their various equipment and tons of foodstuffs could be adequately housed, as well as the various means and methods for 19th century transportation adequately stored. And for operation as a gentleman's farm, the gardener's shed was additionally integral. Still, despite the fact that Crane was a prodigious record keeper, we're missing a lot of information that speaks to his daily life as a family man and local businessman. Few photographs or paper records exist. Oddly enough, one of the most significant sources of information actually comes from the auction notice that ran shortly after his death. Newspapers were a wealth of information in the 19th century, chronicling almost every move of the town's populace, and they proved no different here. So, using the auction notice and the accounting statement which recorded all the sales as guides, let's dig in. Augustus Crane had an extensive carriage collection, which might have been common in the 19th century. It's quite possible the carriages could remain serviceable for 40 plus years. And while it's obvious that all of these vehicles weren't kept on the property, many local carriage shops offered storage because at the very least, families needed a carriage for warmer weather and a sleigh for travel in the snow. Crane's first carriage was a Victoria, an elegant carriage of French origin. It was drawn by one or two horses and the passengers are exposed to the elements. It became very popular among the wealthy families and quite fashionable with the ladies for riding in the park, especially when a stylish coachman was installed in the front. Even better was a pair of coachmen who matched, being of similar height and build. Could this have been Mrs. Crane's? And maybe this was Mr. Crane's idea of living it up with his bride after his family had left the nest. A sporty open carriage, the Phaeton was drawn by one or two horses. Its very light sprung body sat atop four extravagantly large wheels, which made it both fast and dangerous, giving rise to its name, drawn from the mythical Phaeton, son of Helios. While listed in the auction notice, the Phaeton wasn't listed in the accounting for all the objects sold. We can only deduce that it was either in poor condition or old, or just too dangerous. Bruce de Barouche was a four-wheeled carriage that had a seat on the outside for the driver and two double seats on the inside arranged so riders could face each other. Its light construction and little protection from the weather made it a summer carriage. Despite the fact that the Brewster was the Rolls Royce at the time, Cranes only went for about $19 or 600 contemporary. His second least valuable carriage, it was surpassed by every other except his utilitarian buggy, likely his daily vehicle. The buggy is one of the more universal of the 19th century carriages. Cranes was a William Gray and Sons of Chatham, Ontario, Canada. Convertible to a sleigh, this particular buggy was even more universal, but the crane had three sleighs available for auction indicates he probably didn't need to invest in the sleigh kit. At auction, this only fetched $11, roughly $347. It could have been old or just worn out. Conversely, Crane's most valuable carriage was by far his coupe, a four-wheeled carriage based on the coach, but similar, lighter weight, and with only one row of forward-facing seats. 
The driver sat outside on a raised front seat and two passenger ro passengers rode enclosed and safe from the elements. Due to these features, the coupe was considered an ideal vehicle for women to use to go shopping or make social visits. As you can see, coachmen were quite necessary to getting around, although Crane did own vehicles he could drive himself. Coachmen and gardeners were always among the Crane family's employ, and that Augustus Crane maintained a uniform for his coachman to wear indicates the proper impression in the affluent environs of Morristown he required his coachman to make. In 19th century society, coachmen had strict rules to follow. They were to be clean shaven and in Morristown dressed in formal livery, which included white leather or stockinette breeches, top boots, and a single breasted high buttoned frock coat of dark blue, bottle green, brown, or plum colored kersey. In 1906, when Crane passed, coachmen were still an integral part of daily life. As a result, at the auction, Crane's livery suit with gray coat, hats, and leggings sold for over $8, 255 today. Of course, in New Jersey, carriages are only useful 10 months out of the year. Otherwise, sleighs were the way to travel with the snow-covered dirt roads. Sleigh bells, while beautiful, were critical for safety, for neither horse nor sleigh made much noise across the snow. Crane's collection included three sleighs, a box sleigh, double seat sleigh, and a single seat sleigh. Together they, and their very necessary warm wolf robes, sold for $16.50, their bells $2.75, for a grand total of over $600 today. Tools for working the land were also included. Since no subsequent family member would ever work the land similar to Augustus Crane, his widow felt confident to sell the, fam the family's farm equipment. In the 19th century, carts were defined as having two wheels, whereupon wagons had four. At Crane's auction, both were sold. Crane's dump cart and harness proved to be some of the most valuable items outside of the coupe and its various accoutrements. This could again speak to the quality of equipment he purchased for his farming operation, or possibly also the usefulness and versatility of such tools as, at the turn of the 20th century, the local community still maintained a significant number of gentlemen's farms. The wagon with its canopy top, however, was sold for considerably less, indicating that it was likely very well worn. Also for sale at the auction were two Baltimore heaters. Formal and ornate, these coal-fired cast iron parlor heaters fit into fireplaces as an insert. Patented in 1846, they were very popular by the 1870s. The sale of these at auction proved significant to our understanding of how the cranes heated Acorn Hall before the building was modernized in 1935. Since all of Acorn Hall's fireplaces are arched and we know the family heated with coal, these heaters would have been perfect to heat the hall's 8,000 square feet during the long winter months. While listed on the auction notice, they didn't sell, possibly a sign that many, of the local, many in the local area were investing in boilers and steam heat for their homes. Time had passed for this technology, and so while beautiful, they were no longer needed. But this more versatile wood-burning cylinder parlor stove was listed and did sell. Possibly what Crane used to heat his carriage house, this stove was still quite useful. Lastly, the horses. Instrumental to meeting the transportation needs for all our pre-automobile ancestors, for Crane, they were additionally integral to his farming of Acorn Hall. While we have no record of how many horses Crane maintained at any one time, we do know that two were too, too many in 1906. Combined, his Black and Bay carriage horses sold for nearly $8,000. Whips, harnesses, brushes, combs, saddles, bridles, and two tons of hay brought nearly an additional 30. At the end of the sale, Mrs. Crane was issued a check for $525.51, nearly $16,000 today for the lot. While the cash may have helped her charter new life's course, primarily living with her son in the Washington, D.C. area, the documentation and inpro information it provides us is at least that valuable, if not more. The auction helped us better understand Augustus Crane as a family and businessman, as a farmer, and as a well-respected local member of society. 
which better helps us interpret the mid to late 19th century social culture of Morristown, New Jersey. So I hope you've enjoyed today's presentation. Thank you for joining me. Please be sure to subscribe and check us out on social media. We're on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook.